I'll admit, I fell out of the loop with the show one week because of college, and then I just ended up not watching it again. But good lord, you guys are super persistent, and you really want another Higurashi video. Like, so much so that people started going to my other social medias asking for specifically Higurashi. So here I am to talk again about Higurashi Go. I haven't really watched past episode 8 as of making this video, and I've been made aware some of the people watching Go haven't really seen the original. So what I'm going to do today is do another key differences between the original Go type of video like I did last time since you guys really like that and also like 90 people voted that this would be a good idea to do it again. I'm also going to be speculating some of the things that happened this arc like you know what happened other things that are going on in the background etc and when the season is over I will do one big video and after the season is also when the Umineko video is going to come out. That's right it's pronounced Umineko. Yes I know how to pronounce it correctly. I'm not stupid. If I'm speculating stuff that has already been answered then please punch the air very quietly so I can't hear it. I'm sorry. So in the first arc of Go, things were honestly very similar, but there of course were a few things that were slightly different, such as Rena making a black hole in Keiichi's stomach. That holds true for the first episode of Wada Tamashi Hen, for the most part anyways. Change number one. In the original, it starts off with Rika killing herself in front of Shion. This is foreshadowing for the answer arc that comes later on in the show. Go, however, does not have this. We instead go right into club activities, which they're playing a different game. I don't really know if this matters or not, but it's basically the same outcome. And there is no foreshadowing like there was in the original. The events at the toy shop transpire in very similar ways, with Keiichi bribing the boys with Satoko and Rika. Change number two. This is where things change. This is where things honestly really change. In the original, Keiichi is the only one to get a reward, which is the doll. He still doesn't want it, so he gives it to Rena since cute things are her thing. This leads into Mion being upset and venting to Shion about it, and leads to Shion locking up Mion, pretending to be Mion, and killing a bunch of people by developing stage 5 of Hinamizawa syndrome and also going batshit insane. This doesn't happen at all in Go, or anywhere really near it. Because of Rika's time looping, she knows Keiichi giving the doll to Rena will result in Shion killing people. So she influences Keiichi a bit, telling him that despite looks, somebody might really enjoy this doll, and that leads him to give the doll to Mion. So with this turn of events, this arc already is going to be entirely different since Shion will never end up going insane. Change 2.5. This one is by no means significant at all, but Keiichi's dad is with him when he visits Angel Mort in Go. I really like these changes where Keiichi's parents are becoming a lot more involved with the story, since in the original anime, they're not present, like, at all. It's nice to finally be able to get an idea of what they're like, and Keiichi's dad is such a lad. I respect him for going to Angel Mart for titties. Change number three. In the original, Keiichi was really hungry after coming home from school, but they never really say why. However, Shion shows up and gives Keiichi food. In Go, they explain that there was a curry competition gone wrong, and this time it's very clear that it's Mion pretending to be Shion. You can tell by how shy she is acting because Mion is always super shy about her feelings towards Keiichi, and how she says she's bringing him food to thank him for the doll, which was something he gave to Mion and not Shion. There is further proof later in the episode that it was Mion when Keiichi goes to give her back the bento, and she has a shy panic attack at school, and then an episode later, Mion herself does confirm it was her. I'm also going to tie this in here that in Go, Mion goes out of her way to really try and compliment Keiichi in school, almost in a very bold and demanding way. This is very weird and somewhat out of character for her, but I do think I figured out why she did this which I will explain later. I'd also like to note that Rena says to not judge a book by its cover, and Keiichi asks how that applies to her. They have an almost creepy conversation where Keiichi seems like he is afraid to say how he really feels about Rena, and then he notes in an odd scene that Rena might just be the complete opposite of cute and adorable, which I kind of disagree with because she is kind of adorable, but he's not far off because we all know that her mental is not the best. <laughs> Change 3.5. This change, again, like change 2.5, is not very significant, but I just wanted to point out that in the original one, one of the delinquent's hairs was a swastika. Why? I, I don't know, but I'm kind of glad that they changed that. Also, the scene of all the town folks pulling up was far less creepy and go, in my opinion. It was more intimidating than the original. Now, while for the most part, episode 5 of both seasons were similar, this is where the similarities end pretty much with episode 6. I'm going to quickly cover an event that happens in Go that doesn't happen at all in the original, and then I'll get back to talking about the original series. So in Go, Shion calls Keiichi with a very sinister expression, and she asks him to come to Angel Mort to test out desserts for them. He does, and he has served Tropical Cinnamon Love Affair, a very odd name for a dessert, but then some otaku wants Shion to clean his crotch because she spilled some stuff there. Keiichi ain't having any of that, and he goes to defend her, which seems to strike a chord with her, but Keiichi ends up getting the shit slapped out of him anyways. 
This leads to them continuing to flirt in the back room once he becomes conscious again. Then they flirt even more and go on a date basically, but while they're out, Xion notes that Mion is soft about a bunch of things and she doesn't really like that about her. Which, you know, that's kind of an odd thing to do. It just start bringing up things you don't like about your sister to somebody your sister is interested in. But I mean, to each their own. Then Xion takes him to Mion, which makes him realize they're different. She then asks Mion to wrap up the doll that Keiichi said he would buy for Xion, which is the exact same doll he gave to Mion last episode. Strange coincidence. All right, now we're going to do some of the changes that happen in episode six of both series. Change number one. In the original, they both do still bring Keiichi tea, much like they do in Go. But in Go, Mion seems a lot more legitimately upset than she did in the original. Tomitake and Takano both get introduced in the same way as they did in the original. However, this time the characters' responses are a bit different to the mention of Oyashirasama's curse. Mion looks very disgusted at Oishi when he mentions it, and she very clearly doesn't want to talk about it at all. She even seems very hurt that Keichi wants to stay over with them to listen to what Shion has to say over what Mion wants to do. While in the original, Mion seems to just kind of shrug it off and doesn't want to be involved with the conversation. She just leaves. I think it is very important that she is very openly upset about this. Things then play out fairly normally as in both the original and Go, they enter the shrine and see the murder weapons. We get a lot more lore in Go though compared to the original show, which results in Keiichi getting his own Usada moment, you know, the you're, you're lying. Play the clip. <laughs> However, in Go, Shion shakes the statue and ends up knocking off Oyashirasama's head, which is split right in half, apparently. Tomitake says that the head of it was already split in half, though. This might be related to Satoko somehow, since she seems to be in the shrine in the opening, and in the original show, she did end up breaking a piece of the shrine off. But that's just speculation. We don't really have any concrete proof about that. It also seems like Tomitake and Takano are actually legitimately a couple in Go. I'm not entirely sure, but it does really seem like she wants alone time with Tomitake. Okay, change number two. In the original, Xion and Keiichi talk afterwards about what happened, and Xion mentions she heard slamming sounds. We learn later that this is a symptom of the higher stages of Hinamizawa syndrome, and this is due to her batshit yandere tendencies that are brewing behind the scenes that she hears these sounds. In Go, this doesn't happen at all, and instead is met with Xion asking Keiichi not to tell Mion about tonight, since she will probably be jealous, and that they can't tell anybody because they're most likely going to be targets of the curse, which we find out a little later on why she thinks this way. Alright, now I'm not gonna lie. This is basically it for similarities. So what I am going to do is sum up what happens in episodes 6, 7, and 8 of the original before I talk about Go. That way we can talk about what's different and what they likely imply for this arc as a whole. So, in the original, Rika and the gang weirdly show up as soon as Shion leaves Keiichi, weird, I don't know, cool timing, and Mion questions Keiichi about if he had seen Shion. We know that she likely did this because Shion has been acting mega weird as we learn later on in the answer arc, and Mion is probably a little worried about her sister. Then the next morning, he is presented with Mion that is actually Shion in disguise. You see, in the answer arc, we find out that Shion killed her grandmother and trapped Mion down in their torture chamber. She then slipped into Mion's clothes and started role-playing as her, which proved to be effective because Keiichi literally never noticed the difference. He literally just never, never could tell the difference at all. Anyways, Shion says she's going to run and tell the others that he wasn't involved. This is when Keiichi is first clued in that the other people know what they did last night. A day passes and Shion later calls him that night to inform him about Tomitake and Takano's deaths, which are again to the throat gouging and barrel burning. Keiichi blows up and blames Shion for him going to the shrine, to which she hangs up the phone. Then the village headman disappears, which we know was murdered by Shion. Keiichi then confesses to Rika about his sins after she pressures him into it, which we know she does because she wants to break the loop. She says she'll protect him, and then later, Shion and Keiichi talk. Shion then tells Keiichi that she told the headman, and she thinks that because of this, he died. Which, I mean, is not wrong since she was the cause of his death. But because of this, Keiichi thinks that he is going to be the cause of Rika's death. He panics and then he runs over to Rika's place with Rena. The door ends up being locked and Shion comes over to help them, but instead ends up almost knocking Keiichi off a ladder because she goes all yandere for Satoshi. Satoshi is Satoko's brother, for those that don't know. However, after Shion, Rena, and Keiichi all got it together, they did not find Rika or Satoko, and they both went missing. But Rana ends up being a fucking detective, figuring out every detail exactly about the disappearance between Satoko and Rika, and then she suggests that they went to the Sonazaki residence. She ends up being completely right about everything. I'd also like to just point out that overall, Rana feels very different in Go. In the original, she's usually pretty calm, collected, and goes after adorable things in a much more normal manner. 
But in Go, she feels very different. Almost like she's putting on an act. She seems like she's trying really hard to be overly happy in most of the scenes she's in. They go to confront Xion, and she admits to her crimes and takes Keiichi to her torture chamber. Here, she admits to having tortured everybody and killed everybody. She then takes Keiichi into a pit and shows him Mion, who she claims to be Xion, and then she knocks him out to go torture him. Xion explains the doll thing to Keiichi, and then she goes to try and nail in his fingies. Thankfully, we miss out on a BDSM session because Oishi and Rena break into the place, saving Keiichi. His family and him naturally start to move out after a very traumatic event, but then Xion reappears and stabs Keiichi. Then he gets hospitalized, where she again appears and kills him to finish off this arc. Now with the original all summed up, let's talk about Go. Since it was a little while back, I'm just going to sum up what happened through it to catch everybody back up to speed, but if you don't want to watch it, there will be, of course, timestamps in the description. So in Go, Keiichi meets up with almost all of the gang a little after he talks with Shion, but Satoko is strangely absent. This is weird because in the original, she is almost always by Rika's side because she is afraid to be alone due to her uncle's abuse. Where she is off to, we don't really know. Mion takes Keiichi by the hand to go drift cotton with him, but she stops and questions him about Xion. This time, it is more aggressive than it was in the original, and she even seems to get offended when Keiichi says that they look very similar. She says that they don't look that similar, and even wear different outfits, trying very hard to distinguish them. After this, Keiichi comes home, and he has a phone call with Xion. Xion is very clearly staying at the Sonazaki estate, and she asks Keiichi if she saw Tomotake or Takano. Since, at this point, he, this is the third time he had been asked this, since he was asked by Mion, Oishi, and now Xion, he snaps and ask why everybody wants to know where they are. Turns out, they went missing. Which, this is probably the first time that we have ever found out that they went missing on the same night of the Cotton Drifting Festival. He and everyone else usually always find out on the following day. It turns out they stole one of the festival trucks, and then they booked it, leaving behind their car and their bike. This proves my theory from the last video that these two both will probably live in this season, since both of their items were left behind again. It's just, this time around, they were seen escaping. Why it is that they were leaving and in such a hurry is a mystery. However, I do believe that Satoko might have been involved somehow. I'm not entirely sure, but I will talk about that a little bit more later. The next morning, Rana notices that Keiichi is tired looking, which we all know he probably didn't sleep after last night. However, Rena also notices that Mion looks incredibly tired. This is a very interesting comment from Rena, and one we will explore later. Apparently the mayor has gone missing, but this time it's a day earlier than it was last time. Rika goes to talk to Keiichi since she knows exactly what it is that he did because of her looping powers, and Keiichi uses the analogy about cats that Rika used in the original. Then Rika goes to her weird possessed self, and she tells Keiichi that he fucked up for not watching her dance and that everybody is going to die. Great optimism love to see it. Rika then goes on to explain exactly the events that happened in the original, even suggesting that Shion is the one behind this again. However, right after this, Rika goes missing. Satoko immediately starts to point blame at Keiichi without any hesitation at all. She does it in such a grim manner that it's almost creepy. Mion says that she saw Rika talking to what looked like a construction worker. They all start to go look for her, and Keiichi finds a panel that clearly is not in place very well. Before he can explore it though, Mion calls him over. We get a call back to the original with another ladder scene, and Mion notes that Rika has come to carry out Oyashirasama's curse since she is the head of one of the great families, saying that she is the ringleader behind it all and she's trying to kill people, that she won't let Rika kill anyone, and that she's going to put an end to all of the killing. But this gets interrupted by Chi-sensei, and they are all sent home due to Rika's disappearance. Keiichi goes to blame himself on the way home, but oddly enough, the construction workers seem to be watching them. This is very interesting because construction workers were also working on the clinic in the last arc since they were remodeling. During all this, Mion is clearly not happy at all. Once Keiichi goes home, Mion calls him and asks him to come over. At her house, Keiichi confesses to what he has done, and Mion tells him that she already knew, and that a lot of people really want to punish him in the village. Mion then tells him that she is on his side, and she says that she will be the one person on his side always. Keiichi asks her why someone dies every year, and Mion tells him it started off as a coincidence, but then people went on to do it every year using Oyashirasama's curse as an excuse to kill. She then takes Keiichi down to her torture chamber, however, she points out that none of these torture devices have been used at all, which in the original, pretty much all of them were used by Xion. She then takes him to her uncle's safe room, which it's got a ton of cameras and a jail cell, and then she notes a person could live down here for a month. She then proceeds to lock Keiichi inside the cell. <laughs> Mion then brings up the doll and says that he has treated her like a girl, which made her very happy. And for the first time in probably the entire franchise, she says that she loves him. She says that she has to do this to protect him, and that this is the only way to end Oyashirasama's curse. But some people show up, as we get indicated by the cameras, and she whips out the gun that she's always carrying around. That's right, guys, this is a gun she's carrying with her. And she goes to quote-unquote greet her guests. 
which she refers to as minions. Something interesting that I do want to point out though is that she says she can't trust the police in Hinamizawa, which is a comment worth noting because Oishi has been acting very strange since Go started. Maybe this is just me overthinking it though, who knows. Mion leaves the safe house after this, and Keiichi isn't cool with that, so he breaks out of his cell. We see on the screen that the people who are at the estate are the construction workers that were working on the clinic from last arc, which does confirm they are behind the scenes for what's going on. Keiichi then tries to bash the wall, leading to him going unconscious and later being rescued by the police. He's informed that in the well in Mion's dungeon were the bodies of the townsmen, Mion's grandmother, and Shion. Mion was weirdly enough found dead next to Statoko, and that Rika was found dead inside of the compartment that he almost checked earlier in the episode. Now let's get to speculation, boys. I'm not gonna lie, this arc was a lot easier to understand than last arc, as it didn't require nearly as much of a deep dive. It's extremely obvious to me that Mion fell deeply in love with Keiichi, and she became a yandere. I'm surprised they threw out the Rena and Keiichi stuff in literally the next arc of the show, but I see no other explanation here for what's going on. Mion's feelings definitely skyrocketed when she received the doll, which she basically did admit to. Shion appears to be egging on Mion a lot in Go, as she did say there were some soft things that she didn't like about Mion. This is probably referring to how Mion is typically very shy about her feelings for Keiichi, as we see in the entire original airing of Higurashi. Shion spent a large amount of time with Keiichi in Go compared to the original, which likely led to Mion getting overly jealous. This was given in subtext in a lot of the scenes in the show, such as when she brings him to work for Angel Mort, calling him pet names a lot, creating scenarios he would choose Shion over Mion in, etc, etc. This led to a sibling love affair, which ironically, Tropical Cinnamon Love Affair was the only name given for any of the desserts at Angel Mort. On the night of the Cotton Drifting Festival, Shion likely confessed to her parents about what she had done with Keiichi. This most likely led to her family wanting to punish Keiichi, as Mion suggested that a lot of people in the village did want to do this, and Shion herself was also probably aware that they would end up getting punished, since she did tell Keiichi that they would likely become targets of the curse. This then likely leads to Mion killing her grandmother and the town's headmen so that nothing will happen to Keiichi at all, until later she realizes that maybe Rika is the one that wants to kill people. She then probably kills Shion out of pure jealousy and wanting Keiichi to herself. This is why on the next morning after the Cotton Drifting Festival, the mayor has gone missing, Shion is suddenly unheard of, and Mion had hardly slept. This is also basically confirmed that she killed them when she bluntly says she wants to get rid of Rika, thinking that the deaths every year are related to her and the three great families, and she doesn't want them to happen anymore, so nothing will happen to Keiichi. So yeah, it seems extremely obvious that Mion went on a killing spree to make sure the town's murderous customs came to a close so that nothing would happen to her beloved. Yandere powers, let's go boys. What is very interesting though, is how she says that the great families are behind the murders every year. If this is a fact that she knows for sure, then this really makes me question who the villain is behind the scenes this time. Takano was basically responsible for literally every death in the original, so if this wasn't her doing this time around, then that's just a very interesting thought to think about. I would like to talk about one giant elephant in the room though, and that is Satoko. She was strangely absent on the night of the Cotton Drifting Festival, and she immediately called out Keiichi for possibly being responsible for Rika's disappearance. This to me actually tells me that she might be remembering events of prior loops. Ryukishi7 said in an interview that Satoko would be a lot more important in the new season, so this could maybe be her purpose. In the last loop, Keiichi was acting kind of sus about Rena, so naturally Satoko may suss him out and think that he's a creepy killer dude. Why she was missing on the night of the Cotton Drifting Festival could possibly have been to see what happened to Takano and Tomitake. Since if she is looping, she is very well aware that Takano and Tomitake go missing on the night of the Cotton Drifting Festival. And then on top of all of this, she is found dead with Mion at the Sonazaki household when she wasn't seen on any of the cameras. She could possibly have gone to question why Mion defended Keiichi, but I do think that it's interesting that both of Satoko's deaths have been with any other person so far. First with Rika and now with Mion. So instead of Rika though, Satoko looks to possibly be the protagonist this time around and the one that is looping through fragments. But you know, she could actually totally be the villain. Wouldn't it be crazy if she was actually the villain this time around though? Anyways guys, that's all I have to talk about in terms of changes and speculation for Wada Damashi Hen and Hikarashi Go. By the time this video is posted, I will have moved on to the next arc of the show and I should be making another one of these videos. I'm going to do my best to have the next Higurashi video out next Thursday and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for the support on these videos. It's really crazy how much you guys wanted me to make another one of these. I'm so happy you guys are so persistent. But anyways, until next time. Later.